A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Na'idhu Rajeem Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Dear viewers, Assalamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh And welcome to Ahlul Bayt TV's show Where inshallah today we will be discussing fairness The concept of fairness has a high significance in the religion of Islam We know that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tells the believers to be fair in acts during the day In Surah Al-Ma'idah verse number 8 Allah tells us Be bearers of witness, justice and fairness but we ask the question in a 21st century sensationalist, secularist world What does it mean to truly be fair? What does it mean to uphold fairness? Inshallah today I have the respected scholar and Sheikh Hujat al-Islam, Sheikh Muhammad Ali Shamali joining us And inshallah we will be discussing what it means to be fair and to uphold characteristics of fairness Assalamu alaikum Sheikhna Alaikum assalam wa Thank you so much for being My here pleasure. today with Thank us Thank you very much Sheikhna, just to begin as an introductory sort of question When we say fairness, we understand that to be fair is something which we, we look to become and, and to adhere to But what does it truly mean to introduce uh, the meaning of fairness and, and to be a fair person? Yes, thank you very much Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Tayyibin al in my studies and reflections on ethics, I have found some virtues are very significant. All virtues are important, but some of them are very outstanding. And if we study Islamic texts on ethics, we find great emphasis has been put on justice. Yeah. Of course, this is rooted in the Quran and Hadith and has rational also backup. But then, in addition to justice, which is normally introduced in Arabic as Adl or Adala, mm. we have also Insaf. Okay which we translate as fairness. And fairness is a kind of manifestation of justice, is a branch of justice. And I found this to be extremely important, especially in our interaction with each other, mm. in social life, community life. So, I'm very happy that we have the opportunity to discuss this important virtue of fairness mm. and familiarize ourselves with this and try to understand the significance of it and also see how we can become, inshallah, more equipped with fairness. Fairness means that whenever there is an issue between you and another person or another group. It's a matter of your rights and their rights, mm. your position and their position. You should be able to see the question at issue between you and them in maximum objectivity. Okay. Okay. Without taking your own side. Yeah. That is fairness. So if there is an issue between husband and wife, between two neighbors, two colleagues, even between someone and his or her enemy. Yes. In all these circumstances, fairness is needed. And you can imagine how difficult it is to be fair. Yes. Sometimes I use this example. I say, for example, if you have a case with someone and you go to the court and you see that the judge has a special affinity with the other party. Mm -hmm. For example, his relative, his friend. Okay? So you would lose your trust in this court. Yeah. You say... <laughs> This judge is very likely to take the side of the other party. Yeah. Now, in our daily life, many times we are judging. Correct. 
Yeah. And not only we are closer to one party, we are actually one party that is also judging. Yes. So for example, if I have an issue with a friend, no, we have some problems. Who is the judge? Me. I'm judging and I'm also one party. So how difficult it is. You, this is why you see everyone normally says, I am right, the other party is wrong. Mm. You know? mm. Because as we say you know, in Farsi, you know, we have a proverb that if you go to meet the judge alone, you will come back happily because <laughs> you are giving only one side of the story. Yeah. Yeah? But imagine if you yourself are also the judge. Mm. So how much of self-control must be there? How much of objectivity, rationality must be there? That between you and another person, you don't take your side. Yes, absolutely. You stand in between, exactly. This is called ensaf. Ensaf nosf, fairness, comes from nesf, mishaf. Okay. Means you exactly stand in the middle, in the middle. between yourself Neutrality. and others, not take your side. Yeah. It's extremely difficult, but very much needed because this is the only way we can understand our mistakes, we can observe other people's rights yes. and give them chance to be treated with justice. So Sheikh, it's, it's of course very important to be, to be neutral and not to have a bias in the circumstances. Yeah. But the ordinary person, I think, would, would have a moral compass which is tilted sometimes. It's difficult to determine if I'm doing the right thing, if I'm doing the fair thing. In a situation where there's perhaps um, a lack of clarity or we're not too sure what is the right thing, what is fair and what's not fair, where we do have a, a subtle and subconscious bias, what can we do to determine what is fair? First of all, we have to collect as much as possible information about okay. the case. Maybe we need to educate ourselves, maybe we need to learn. Because sometimes to know what's the right, the right of other party, you need to study. Yes. But more than that, it's a matter of training ourselves to be always committed to the truth, to justice. Mm. And justice comes very closely connected to the truth. Yeah. So if I am able to see the truth, even if it's against me, and I'm able to overcome my emotions, even if they are strong against the other party, then I can be fair. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, imagine, for example, if uh, your child comes home or your little brother comes home and has had a fight with someone in the school. Yeah. Are you able to be objective? It's very difficult. It's very difficult. Yeah. Now, imagine if you yourself have a problem. One of the great qualities of a believer is to be able to admit his or her mistakes. Absolutely. Yeah. This gives the hope that, inshallah, there is some fairness. But if throughout the day we have, say, 100 interactions as a minimum, mm. and in all these 100 interactions, I always think that I am right and the other people were wrong if there was a problem, yeah. or 90% I am right and 10% you know, the, uh, I am wrong, this shows there is no fairness. This shows that I'm not going to improve. So it's a real challenge and it needs training. It needs to discipline ourselves. Yes, yes. And I wish from childhood we bring up our children with this habit of acknowledging, admitting their mistakes. Yes. That's great achievement if you are able to admit your mistakes. Yes. But if you first hide your mistake, then a time comes that even you don't understand your mistakes and you think you are right all the time. Yeah. And that's yeah. the problem that we can have you know, in society. So fairness is a great indicator of more underlying virtues. Okay. You mentioned uh, bringing up children and of course being able to train your children 
to acknowledge their mistakes, to understand what's right and what's wrong. When we talk to our children, the youth, um, the younger generations in society, we often try to link back to examples of individuals um, in the history of Islam who have acknowledged uh, and, and kind of demonstrated fairness in their lives. What kind of key examples or who perhaps are the best examples to give the youth and, and general people day to day to learn from? I think we find this fairness very visible and clear in the lives of the infallibles mm -hmm. of the Ahlul Bayt. When you look at the, for example, example of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you see he is not holding any special privilege yeah. for himself. For example, if he's dealing with his wife yeah. or, I don't know, other people, neighbors, enemies, he would not say, because I am a prophet, you are always to listen to me and you are wrong, you know? Mm. Actually, what we find in the example of prophet is that when it comes to his personal life, he was always trying to compromise. Okay. He was always trying to give priority to the other party. Yeah. To the extent that sometimes he was very much annoyed mm. and people were not observing his comfort or privacy, but he was still not, you know, stopping them. Yes. yes. For example, people wanted to talk to him about everything, wanted to take his time, wanted to go to him, his home even without permission, you know. Yeah. Then we see sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, instead of the Prophet, asked people to observe rights of the Prophet. Yeah. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the believers that if you want to enter the houses of the Prophet, you have to seek permission. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la tadkhulu buyuta nabi illa an yu'dhana lakum. Do not enter the house of the Prophet without being given permission. permission. It yeah. means that in the past, even some people without permission used to visit him. Gosh. Yeah. yeah? Even they used to sometimes, you know, stand outside his home and, you know, cry and, you know, shout yeah. that. Then Allah said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُنَادُونَكَ مِنْ وَرَاءِ الْحُجُرَاتِ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَقْرِ Those people who call you and shout you from outside. So there are many, many examples that the Prophet, when it comes to his personal life, he was very, very flexible, lenient, even more than ensaf. Because yes. Ensaf is to be considering both sides equally. 50, 50, yeah. But he was giving priority to the other part. I see. Or for example, an example which I think is uh, also important to be mentioned is about Imam Ali alayhi salam. When he was uh, in power, when he was the caliph, there was a case someone complained about Imam Ali mm. to the court. And Imam Ali is the head of the state and the judge is under his authority. Yes. But he didn't say, first of all, you don't have any right to complain about me. I'm the right. head of the state. Yeah. No. He was happy to go with that person to the court. Yes. Imagine, so it's a great level of justice and fairness that yeah. although you are also imam, you are ma'asum, you are infallible, but you go with the person who makes a claim against you to the court. And then when the judge just addressed Imam with his nickname and the other person with his first name. Oh, I see. Yeah. Just that. He didn't bring any titles, you know, like for example, you are, you know, Khalifatul Muslimin, Amirul Mu'mineen, mm -hmm. you know. Just he mentioned Imam with his nickname, Kunya, and the other person with the first name. Imam objected. Yeah. Imam said, this is not fair. You have to address me in the same way that you address him. Can you imagine? This may look 
little, but this is great. Big example. Because yeah. from these things, little by little, uh, you know, you can reach justice in the society. And if you don't observe little by little, we would have arrogance, we would have tyranny. So fairness is something that I think you find it to the great extent in the lives of the Ahlul Bayt and Absolutely. true believers. Absolutely. So we know, of course, the significance of fairness is, is so high and we are reminded consistently in, in the Holy Quran and as you mentioned in the lives of the Ahlul Bayt to be fair. Yeah. Sheikhna, with due respect, I think in our communities, often we forget to be fair, um, not just as individuals, but perhaps as a collective group sometimes. Um, I personally believe that there, there exists elements of favoritism through tribes or communities or different cultures, where perhaps sometimes we may favor people of our own creed, um, as opposed to um, people of other creeds and backgrounds. Um, we may have this prejudice and we may judge people, I wanted to ask your opinion, do you feel this exists? Um, if so, if this reality does exist, what can we do to address it? You know, there are two issues that sometimes uh, they are mixed up and we have to make distinction. It is true that you should have a special relation and a stronger sense of responsibility towards your family, your community. Yes. Okay? This is true. But, on the other hand, you have to be also fair and just. So, sometimes people don't get these two right. Yeah. So, my understanding is this. If something is yours, and you have full rights over it, mm then you should observe certain criteria for giving this to other people. Right, okay. Okay? You may, for example, try to give to people who are needy more than the people who are not needy. Yeah. Or those who have greater need, give them more than those who have less need. Another criteria is you want to, for example, give more to your kinship, for example, mm. to your brother, sister, parents, cousin. That's not a problem. If it is yours and you have full control and you also observe other points like who is in greater need, what's the priority. But one also priority in Islam, which is very rational, is family, is relatives. Okay? Yeah. So for example, you want to invite people as guests. Mm. So one reason can be they are in need. Right. Another reason is that because they are your family members, even if they are not in need, yeah. or community members. Yeah. But sometimes it's not your rights. It's not your, for example, position or property. You are just put there to find out the most qualified people. Okay, so for example, you are a manager or, you know, for example, I, uh, human resource management yeah. manager of a company. It's not your company. Yeah. Yeah? It's public or belongs to someone else. Mm. They expect from you, and this is your moral responsibility and your, you know, duty that you find for any job the most qualified people. Not that you give the job to your friends or family members, even if they are less qualified. So, it's a matter of how much of it is your rights and how much is your responsibility towards uh, another people or another group. So, if it comes to having a strong sense of responsibility and affection. Right. Then you can have more towards some people like family, like you know, relatives, but like we, sh we shouldn't perhaps distinguish when it comes to race or to culture. We shouldn't maybe judge and say, can we have favoritism? Any element of favoritism yeah. or yeah. So but favoritism, if it is meant in the sense that we normally understand, in the okay. sense that 
you discriminate. Oh, I see. That's the problem. Yes. So you discriminate against some people because of their race, because of their religion, because yeah. of gender, because of age, although they are qualified. Mm. Okay, that's another issue. Mm. So for example, if uh, I visit my parents more, yeah. this is not favoritism. Yeah. Yeah? If I give, for example, more money to my relatives who are in need, this is not favoritism. Okay. But if I am discriminating and misusing the resources which are there yeah. for people just because they are related to me, that's favoritism. Sheikh, it's often thought that there is a, a concept where we say, or where, where, where particular scholars say that to be fair and to be just and to show these attributes and to demonstrate it can be ranked higher than to be benevolent or to be generous uh, or to show mercy. Is this correct? Um, if so, why? Uh, we have a saying of Amir al-Mu'min al salam where he says that justice is better than generosity because justice puts things in their right place and generosity can take them outside. Oh, I see. Then there has been discussion, what does it mean? The idea is this. We should have full observation of moral values, yeah. rights of people, and see in the long term what brings more good to the society. Okay, yeah. As a teacher, if I am generous with giving marks, yep. I have to see, is it something that in the long term is good? For example, because I want to encourage my students, there are people who are losing their hope, then this generosity is very good. Yeah. Yeah. But if this generosity is going to spoil them or make them lazy, then mm. justice is better. Yeah. Okay? Means you give everyone what he deserves. Yeah. So you never do injustice in the sense that give people less than what they deserve. But it's a matter of whether you give them exactly what they deserve or you give them more than what they deserve. I see. Okay. Okay? So Zolm is always rejected. Injustice yeah. always. Giving people less than what they deserve is rejected. Yeah. But to give them exactly what they deserve, which is the second meaning of justice, because justice sometimes is used in this sense. Yeah. To give them exactly what they deserve, nothing more, nothing less. Yeah. Like we say yeah. to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِلَاهَنَا عَامِلْنَا بِفَضْلِكَ وَلَا تُعَامِلْنَا بِعَدْلِكَ Please treat us with your favor, not with your justice. Oh, Here justice means to give us exactly what we deserve. This is worrying. Mm. Because if Allah gives us exactly what we deserve, we deserve nothing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> except maybe blame. Yeah. But if you mean justice in the sense of not doing zulm, yes. it's always good. So, never zulm, but sometimes it's better to give people exactly what they deserve so that they work harder, they don't become lazy, they don't become dependent, and sometimes it's better to give them more than what they deserve, to be more generous, because they need a little push, they need a mm. little hope, they need a little encouragement, so that they can then stand on their feet. So, you have to make sure that you are not acting emotionally, out of anger or out of you know, affection only, you have full understanding of what uh, morality requires yeah. here in this context. Sheikh, you mentioned the hadith from Amir al-Mu'mineen about justice and, and, and generosity. Um, are there any other particular hadiths we can look to, for example, um, and learn from about fairness? Yes, thank you. Yes, actually there are many hadiths about fairness and I thought of sharing uh, uh, maybe two hadiths uh, from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One hadith is 
Salat la tutiquha hadhihi al-ummah. According to this hadith which is in Bihar al-Anwar and also cited in Mizan al-Hikmah. Okay. Rasulullah said there are three things that this nation would find it very difficult to cope with. They cannot cope with. Yeah. Means they are very demanding and challenging. One, al-muwasatu lil-akh fi malahi. To share their money with their brothers and sisters. Mm. Their own money. This is not, uh, you know, public money. Public money, or this is not, you know, obligatory, you know, tax like zakat and khums. Oh, I see, yeah. Their own money to be sharing with their brothers and sisters. It's okay. not easy. Yeah. Second, وَإِنْصَافُ min nafsi To be fair, to be fair with respect to people. Nas, nas means anyone. Yes. Not only believers, not only Muslims, yeah. not only you know your people, any anyone, person. Yeah. You have to be fair between you and other people. And third, ذِكْرُ ala kulli hal To remember Allah in all circumstances. Yes. Yeah. So Rasulullah says these are three things that this Ummah would find it challenging. Difficult, yeah. And as you see, they are very, very important to be sharing with each other yeah. our money, to be fair with people, and to remember Allah all the time. The second hadith is a kind of wasiya, a kind of advice Rasulullah had for Ibn Mas'ud. You know, Ibn Mas'ud was a mm. companion of the Prophet, mm. one of the writers of Revelation. Yeah. Rasulullah told him, Ya Ibn Mas'ud, O son of Mas'ud, Ansif al-Nas min nafsik. Give people free treatment. Don't take your own side. Yeah. al-Ummah. Warhamhum. Wish good for Ummah. Any person you should wish good for him, not only for yourself or mm. your relatives. Be merciful to Ummah, be merciful to people, to all people. Fa'idha kunta kadalik. If you manage to be like that, you are fair and you are kind. And you wish good for people. وَأَرَادَ فَإِذَا كُنْتَ كَذَلِكَ وَقَذِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِ بَلْدَةٍ أَنْتَ فِيهَا وَأَرَادَ أَنْ يُنْزِلَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْعَذَابِ If you have such qualities and you are living in a place that the inhabitants of that place deserve punishment. Yeah. And Allah wants to send down punishment to them, but you are there. Yes. Nazara ilayka. Then Allah would look at you. Farrahimahum bik. Then Allah, because of you, would have mercy on them and oh, would not yes. punish them. Mashallah. So one fair yeah. person who wants good for others can protect the whole nation. Change the fate. Yeah. Change the fate of people. Then so, Rasulullah recited this ayah. وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ لِيُهْلِكَ الْقُرَىٰ بِظُلْمٍ وَأَهْلُهَا مُصْلِحُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Your Lord is not going to destroy towns because of their injustice while there are good people. Oh, I see. So if most of inhabitants of a town are doing bad things, but still there are good people, Allah will not destroy that cities. Asad. So this is the beauty of being fair. And we have tens of hadiths about yes. fairness. And I thought to share these two. Asad. I hope, inshallah, we will all try our best to become, inshallah, fair. Inshallah. Sheikh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, my pleasure. Asad.